Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Hall and today we're going to learn about how to meet your guardian angels. Everyone has guardian angels, no matter your religious affiliations, because angels are universal beings of love who are here to guide all of humanity. So who are the guardian angels? Guardian angels are loving spiritual beings who watch over you throughout your entire life. They are your most constant spiritual guides. Most of us know them even before we are born since they help us in preparing to embark upon a human lifetime. They know your life's plan and purpose and have made a soul agreement with you to guide you through each experience along the journey, whether positive or negative. They are here to protect you and counsel you or nudge you on the right path so that you can keep with your soul's chosen lessons and purpose. Guardian angels are beings of pure love, just as all angels are. And they understand you, accept you, and love you unconditionally, no matter what. So of course, it is a wonderful thing to get to know them and to be able to call upon them by name. They can make wonderful friends and companions. Now, guardian angels are different than archangels. While archangels such as Michael, Raphael, or Uriel may also watch over you and act as constant guides and protectors, your guardian angels are someone different. This being, the guardian angel, is a special unique member of your soul family who is focused on all that is you 24 7. They are heaven sent to watch over the miracle that is your unique soul's expansion. They love you. They guard your soul's highest intentions and destinies and again primarily make sure that you stay connected to your chosen path and purpose by protecting you and guiding you in all that you do. Now when called upon your guardian angel will always guide you back to the light from which you came. They are wonderful reminders of heaven, helping you to keep connected to the divine source of love that is God. Now, just like all angels, of course, your guardian angels will always honor your free will choices. They intervene, guide, help, and heal to the extent that you allow and invite them to do so. Free will is a beautiful and integral part of the human experience because we are here to expand the universal soul and we do it by navigating through the adventure that is this life with our own desires, our own convictions, passions, decisions, and lessons here to help us to learn in our own unique way. We all signed up for this adventure and anticipated it passionately until the moment we were born and your guardian angel was there from the beginning. Your guardian angel understands the extent to which your soul wishes to grow and explore this world in relative independence or with their guidance. So they understand where your soul might want to garner or test or creatively shape its own strength and life force by doing some things on our own, figuring things out. But that being said, again, you have free will, so you can call upon your guardian angel to help you and soothe you or teach you and aid you in manifesting miracles at any moment that you choose. Now, what about people who don't know the angels? How do their guardian angels help them? Well, the guardian angels will intervene in the lives of those who aren't aware of angels or aren't inviting them in, so long as that person is subconsciously open and willing to receive help, oftentimes because that person has a contract at a soul level to have the angels intervene in her or his life in some way. One very common agreement that we have made with our guardian angels is to have them protect us from dying before our soul's chosen time. We all make unique agreements with our guardian angels too before we are born. And you may have already agreed that your angel would intervene in certain areas of your life to the extent that they keep you on purpose or protected under certain circumstances. Perhaps they're guiding you in your relationships or with your career path. It just depends on you. 
It all depends on your unique soul's mission and plan for this lifetime. And again, of course, you can always invite them in more. And to that point, depending on your unique purpose, you may have more than one guardian angel. Most of us seem to have at least two, if not more guardian angels with us, depending on our intentions for this lifetime. And again, yes, you can meet and get to know your guardian angel. I'll tell you about my first experience meeting one of my guardian angels. Many years ago, when I was first learning about angels and beginning to feel and connect with them most, I thought to myself, I would really like to know my guardian angel. If there is a being who has known and loved me since before birth, it would be wonderful to meet that being. And and so I prayed and mentally I set the intention with the universe that I wanted to meet my guardian angel. Well, fast forward to a few weeks later, I was attending my first kundalini yoga class. Kundalini is a style of yoga that has many wonderful spiritual benefits in addition, of course, to the physical and mental benefits. I find kundalini yoga highly effective at radically and very swiftly shifting my vibration to heightened states of being, in which my conscious connectedness to the oneness of the universe is made quite stronger and more clear. Sometimes in this form of yoga, I've literally been able to feel my vibration lifting and clearing out my energy body of anything that I don't need, kind of buzzing around things and shifting. So it's highly purifying. And in my very first kundalini yoga class, wow, was that ever true. I felt these buzzing sensations shifting the flow of energy throughout my body. They dissolved blockages and just seemed to heighten my feeling of wholeness and well-being, body, mind, and spirit. My mind kind of felt as if the clouds had disappeared and the sun was now shining in, enabling me to perceive and kind of expand beautifully. So that felt really good. And at the end of the yoga class, we were all lying down in Shavasana, which is to lie down on your back with your eyes closed and to rest, meditate, and assimilate the benefits of the practice. So I remember lying down in Shavasana, and I remember that the lights were very dim in the room. There were only a few candles lighting the room, and it was kind of a crisp autumn evening, and the sun had already disappeared from the sky. And I remember feeling that that kind of dark, warm setting of the moment, it just lent to a very inward, introspective state. I could still feel my energy buzzing, in fact, from the class. And as I meditated, I observed my energy body kind of dancing very swiftly with a kind of golden colored light that I could perceive all around me. Then the golden light seemed to concentrate right in front of my face. And after a moment, out of the golden light, a face formed in front of me. It was a beautiful, sweet face with soft, round cheeks and big, shining eyes. And I was so surprised that I opened my eyes ever so slightly. And much to my amazement, I was still seeing the face, even with my eyes open, right in the air in front of me. So I closed my eyes again to concentrate on this. And soon there was what seemed to be a young woman, the aura of a a woman hovering above me. She was absolutely radiant, made of incredibly vibrant golden light. Every particle of her countenance seemed like it held a billion other particles of light inside of it. She was so beautiful and so kind looking, so compassionate. She was smiling with such a sweet, innocent smile. And suddenly I saw tears streaming down her eyes tears of pure happiness and overwhelming love. I had such a familiar feeling from her, as if I had known her forever. I knew instantly that she was my guardian angel. I just felt it and knew it. And I realized that she was weeping out of happiness that I was finally seeing her. That after all this time, we were actually looking at one another face to face. 
Soon I began to cry with joy as well, just feeling that connection. And silently I asked her, what is your name? Her voice sounded like it had many layers to it, like a kind of a chorus of bells. And she said, Bethlehem. I heard the name repeated in my head several times as if it were echoing across my consciousness like a sound echoing across a lake. Then she paused and said, you can call me Beth. I spent the next few moments simply meditating and being with her until it was time for the yoga class to be over. And wow, did it ever feel good walking home that night. And that was the first time I met one of my guardian angels. I just asked to meet one, and then so I did. And I believe so can you. The first step in doing so is always, always, always set the intention. And remember that angels and other loving spiritual beings, again, will always respect your free will. So you have to ask first if you want something. You may do so through writing, dedicating a meditation practice to the intention setting, and then perhaps speaking or thinking your inten intention while you feel very connected to the spiritual energy. Or you may do so through prayer, whether it's traditional form of prayer or one that you make up yourself. Once you ask, all you need to do is begin to open your mind to receive. Many people will actually receive the name or an image or a feeling of their guardian angel right away, right after asking. In fact, I actually had an amazing experience of that recently. I was doing an angel reading for a wonderful little girl and for her sister, and when we asked what her guardian angel's name was, we both heard the name at the same time. So I said, I'm hearing a name that sounds like Seviel. And she gasped with the most delighted look in her eyes and she said, I just heard the name Sephiel in my head. And she was so excited because she felt as if she knew that would be her guardian angel's name. So we both heard practically the same name simultaneously, which was just so amazing. And of course, children are open to the spiritual energy so easily, so it's easy for them to connect. But if you're like me, when I first asked who my guardian angel was, you might need to lift your vibration and open your spiritual consciousness first before you'll be able to sense or notice the answer that's coming from your angels. But know this, your angels will always, always answer every prayer and every question you ask until you receive the answer in some form or another. They always help deliver what you need in exactly the way that best suits you, that you are ready for, that you are receptive to. So again, once you set your intention to meet with your guardian angel, watch for the signs. Maybe you'll continuously meet people with the same name out in the world or see or read a particular name over and over again until you finally realize that, oh, this is my guardian angel's name. Or maybe you'll meditate or pray daily after you've set your intention, which of course is a wonderful way to lift your spiritual energy. And then Within meditation and prayer, you'll eventually begin to see, feel, or perceive, or hear in some way the presence of your guardian angel. If you want to connect with your guardian angel, I do highly recommend doing something to raise your frequency regularly until your spiritual senses sharpen a bit. And you'll know when they are because you may begin to attract a lot of synchronicities. Synchronicities are, of course, divine coincidences that are heaven sent to show you that you're on the right path. And your guardian angels, yes, do send you these sometimes. I find it helpful to do something to uplift your vibration by activating all components of your being at once, including, you know, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. So in my case, kundalini yoga kind of activated all three of those things at one time, but you can practice a variety of things to lift your frequency any way that resonates with you the most, whether it's exercise or yoga for your physical body, dietary change, maybe dance, ecstatic dance, singing, meditation, praying, making art, chanting, spiritual rituals. It's totally up to you. 
whatever way you choose to access your angels, I highly recommend just going ahead and practicing with it. And I also recommend asking your guardian angel to tell you their names. This way, you'll have a very personal, tangible, and easy way to call upon them right away. Furthermore, when you get someone's name, that being's energy will be infused into the name. So just by knowing a name, you know the being. It is a way of intimating with someone to know them and call them by their name. The name kind of conjures all the consciousness that that being has associated with her or himself. And knowing it, it kind of promotes togetherness, doesn't it? It promotes understanding. Now you can also ask your guardian angels to send you a specific sign or symbol to help you communicate with them. For example, some people's angels send them feathers or coins or birds flying in the sky or coming up really close to you or specific songs as synchronicities to let them know that they're loved, that you're being watched over. Another very common sign is to connect with a particular color. As most angels will always have a dominant color that is in their energy field and it's connected to who they are, what their personality is like, what their mission is. You see, every color represents a different ray or shade of divine consciousness. So to know their color and the meaning of your angel's color is a way to get to know them too. So let's go ahead and do a little mini spiritual exercise together now to call upon your guardian angels. So go ahead and place your hand over your heart. Take in a deep breath. You can close your eyes if that feels good. Breathe, relax, and feel these words echoing through your heart. Dear guardian angels, please be close to me now. Open my heart, mind, and spirit so that I may sense your presence and come to know you. Please teach me your name and how might I relate with you the best. Show me the truth of your love, guardian angel. Guide me to be pure of heart and spirit so that I may walk in your loving light now and always. Now breathe deeply and feel your spirit filling up with beautiful angelic light. Breathe this light and know that your guardian angel loves you and is with you. And you can come back to this kind of exercise and repeat it anytime you want to continue feeling close at them. You may now open your eyes if you're ready to do so. And please do carry this feeling of connection and love with you today and every day. Thank you so much for watching this video, my friends. Do keep in touch with me by liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell and clicking the social media links in the description below if you'd like to keep in touch. And if you want to support my mission to make as much free spiritually empowering content on this channel as possible, you can also click the link below to join my Patreon. If you want to connect with me personally for a healing, reading, or angelically channeled course, you can visit my website at sarahhall.com. And know, until we meet again, that you are so loved and so very blessed. Bye!